Oh boy, do I have a story to tell all y'all. I had to call the police last week. This is Monday, okay? I'm babysitting my brother, being a good sister, whatever, blah, 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 blah. And all of a sudden, this guy comes ringing on our doorbell. Now, we have that sign that says, like, we're some residential place where you can't knock our door or whatever because we don't really care what you're going to say. But this guy continued to knock. So then that was already a little bit, a little bit suspicious. Okay, whatever, maybe he's some salesman. Peek through, like, the little crack that we have in our window. And he's still standing there. And he's, like, trying to look back in the hole for me. He goes away, finally. That day, I managed to get video of the license plate. Because I was like, you know, just in case. Because I don't know why this guy... I mean, he looks like some normal guy. Normal, creepy guy. He had, like, a look in his face. He mixed between Steve Carell and Ray Romano. If those two had a kid, that's what he would look like. But then, you know, I didn't think anything of it. I told my mom. My mom's like, record him if he continues. He rang the doorbell, like, twice already. So I was like, okay, no big deal. Whatever. It's just some guy who doesn't know what he's doing. This guy, I kid you not, came back on Wednesday. He goes, and he rings the doorbell again. And then twice, he rings the doorbell twice. And then three times. And then I'm looking through the people. It's the same freaking guy again. What is he doing here? There's no cars in the driveway. M mind you this, this guy's still showing up when there's no cars in the driveway. If someone didn't answer the door the first time, you really think they're gonna answer the second time? And my dog's already barking, and she's freaking out. I look through the people. He's looking back at me. It's not even a real peephole. It's just crap. He's like trying to make eye contact. Managed to get a picture of his face. This guy. He goes and he says, show yourself. This creepy guy is showing up at my house again and he goes, show yourself. And I grab my brother, we go hide in the kitchen and I'm like texting my mom, the creepy guy's back again and he's just telling me to show myself and I'm freaking out. came up to the big window at one point because my dog started jumping on the window and she started barking like all hell broke loose. I started calling 911. I was like, yo, 911. I didn't say yo. 911, there's a creepy guy at my house and he rang the doorbell like three times and he told me to show myself and I'm really freaked out right now. Oh, is he still there? Back in his car. Same car, by the way, as last time. So he didn't, you know, think about changing cars. Still hiding by my house somewhere? Is he still in the neighborhood somewhere? So then the police came over and they were searching the neighborhood first to see if he was still. I was calling my mom and then I called my aunt. I was like, my aunt lives across the street, like around the corner. And I'm hey, Terry, you gotta come over here. There is some creepy guy in my And then, so then she comes over and then we're all like taking care of the situation of this creepy guy who just came to my house and told me to show myself. So the police come and they're talking to me. They're like, oh, is this guy, blah, blah, blah. I gave them the license plate number. My mom had a security camera upstairs. So talking to a police officer, this guy just showed up at my house for like the, th like the second time this week. And he, except this time he rang the doorbell three times and he said, show yourself. And that's when I got really scared. If there's some creepy guy looking through your window and telling you to show yourself, I don't know about you, but I would run. I would leave the house immediately because I was afraid he was going to try and break into the house. Mr. Police officer guy, he was like so impressed because I got the license plate and I got his car. And they were searching up the license plate and he was like, okay, um, I don't know who this is yet, but I think it's, I think it's a state license plate. So this guy like works with the state or whatever. He did, he did not look like official person that I can just tell you that right now. He looked like your average Joe. The only difference was he was ringing my doorbell and telling me to show myself. I gave, I gave the police officer my mom's phone number to call back or whatever. And then he, apparently he's, so then called my mom. He was this guy who was supposed to give my mom paperwork. What? What guy who has to give you paperwork comes up to your door, rings it like seven times, and then tells you to show yourself to a child? You know that there's a little child. He could see my brother, like, in the living room on the computer. Blinds were a little bit open because, you know, it was sunny out. You know, we weren't expecting some guy to come up and start looking through the window. He, no, he wasn't even, like, an official person. He's like, just a, a citizen that delivers stuff. But he drives, like, a state car. Like, he has the license plate for a state vehicle. But he's just a citizen that drops off paperwork. What? Is your job to scare children? Get the police called on you? Because that's exactly what you did, my friend. I don't know if you've been heard about this, but there is this new technology in this world called a cell phone. Even if you used a house phone, you could have called and left a message saying, hey, I need to drop off some paperwork and I can't leave it here. Or you could have even sent snail mail. You could have sent a letter in the mailbox that said, hey, I need you to answer the door at this time or come to this building at this time. So you know what happened? So after all this occurred and the police officer called up my mom just to let him know that he's some stupid guy that needs to give my mom papers. She just went there and picked up the papers. That's all she had to do. 